we did Judgment together with Pam directing and, and you directing and you designing. Yeah. And I've worked with Pam a number of times. You two share a quality of um, muscular work. And there's a tactile sense to both what Pam wants from a play and from what I see coming out your designer hands. It's a tactile sense. That's a very tactile. There's nothing sort of, some, some designers are very intellectual, some are very, you know, concept driven, but you seem very hands-on, muscular, tactile. That I can touch, breathe, smell, and interact with the worlds that you create, which I always adored about your work. It's true, Pam. Pam is, she's a muscular intellect, and she's yeah. very flexible, too, with her. And she's not at all stuck on her ideas, you know what I mean? Now, you've talked to her lots and worked with her. So uh, you understand that she has a certain ouverture on pe other artists' ideas. And I think she understands the, the, the role of a director as a kind of um, uh, collaborator with other artists, with, with uh, actors, with designers, with whatever. Uh, so, I mean, she, she has a muscular, flexible intellect, but... Um, it's, 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 there's a kind of trust involved, too, in working with her. And it's, it's, it's very much a two-way thing. Uh, so I had a great time once at Stratford working with her. We did um, a production of Henry VI, parts one, two, and three, all junked together as one evening. And Pam did the edit on that, those three massive texts. Can you imagine the job of to take yeah. those three plays and yeah. boil them down? I mean, you had to eliminate some of the best things in there, you know, and you had to eliminate just scenes that people, pivotal, not pivotal scenes, but scenes that are so much part of each one of those plays. Anyway, and um, she recognized it as a, I mean, it's it's more gory than any Richard III could be, or any, I mean, there's, the, it, it, Rich Henry the Sixth is full of people getting their eyes put out and being, being uh, beheaded, and I mean it just goes on and on, and it's like a bloodbath. You know what I mean? So it's so grand guignol. I said, you know, there's no way people are going to take, it, especially condensed like this. It's going to be, I and mean, people are going to just scream laughing and stuff. She said, you know, why don't we just go nuts and just make it as grand guignol as possible, you know what I mean? So I said, okay. What does grand guignol mean? Oh, uh, gothic and bloody, right. you know, and uh, you know, all of those things. And uh, so, I mean, we did stuff like, uh, there's one scene where a bunch of soldiers come in and throw somebody's head they've just cut off onto the stage, you know what I mean? So what do we do? A fake old plaster cast of the likeness of the actor? Nah, not that. What we finally did was a, a cheesecloth bag of r cooked rigatonis so soaked in tomato sauce that just plop on the stage. I mean, stuff like this. I mean, it was gross beyond. But the materials seemed to warrant that kind of treatment. Do you know what I mean? It was, especially uh, with a contemporary audience, I mean, there's no way you can present that stuff with a straight face. So we just did it, went crazy. I mean, Booth Harding Savage, you know, you can imagine. <laughs> Dacolos, who, I mean, it was like a list of all of her right. friends and people I knew too in the play. I mean, it was, it was great.